Hey, now I want to tell you something about a really important function in mathematics that we're going to see all the time. And it's called the absolute value. And really the idea of the absolute value is quite simple. It's literally just the distance a number is from zero. And distance, if you look at a ruler, for example, you'll notice is always going to be positive or zero if you happen to be right at the beginning. So in fact, the absolute value of a number is always going to be either positive or zero, never, never negative. Now, let me show you how we write these things. It's really kind of cool. We use these vertical symbols like this. And what this means is the absolute value of three. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means kind of the distance three is away from zero. So if you think about a number line, here's three and here's zero, well, what's the What's the distance away? Well, if you measured it with a little ruler that you put there, you'd see it's three units. So in fact, the absolute value of three is just three. But here's the real cool thing. The real cool thing is, suppose I want to find the absolute value of, say, negative two. Well, where's negative two? Well, negative two is way over here. I want to look at its distance from zero, which means all I care about is how many units away. And so what I see here is that this is actually two units away. So the absolute value of negative two is two. Now let me talk to you for a second, just you and me. Here's the idea. The idea basically is if you've got a number inside the absolute value, it's going to pop out of the absolute value as positive. So basically, if you see the absolute value of negative 17, it's going to be 17. If you're going to look at the absolute value of 55, it's going to be 55. So the absolute value of negative 17 is going to be 17. So the important thing to remember is that whatever's inside there, it's always going to come out of the absolute value positive. Now that sounds really easy, but it's a little tricky because sometimes we don't know if a number is positive or negative because it might be a variable. So let me take a look at some examples where we can actually see this interesting feature arising. So first, I just want to simplify some stuff. So here's, a, here's an interesting quantity. The absolute value of 2 cubed minus 5 times the absolute value of negative 3 minus 7. So what do you do here? Well, in this kind of context, in terms of the algebra of things, absolute values are kind of like parentheses, if you will. So you can think of them as being very, very vertical parentheses, which means that if you have parentheses, you've got to do that action inside first. So let's do all the first stuff and then figure out what comes next. So 2 cubed. Now, 2 cubed is 8. So we want the absolute value of 8. Now, that's OK. I can do that. Minus 5 times the absolute value of negative 3 uh, minus 7. Well, what's negative 3 minus 7? Well, that's negative 10. OK, now I did all the stuff in the absolute values, or kind of all the things in the parentheses, if you will. And now we actually have to compute the absolute value. Well, that's really straightforward. The absolute value of 8 is 8, because that's the distance 8 is from 0. And then minus 5 times, and now what's the absolute value of negative 10? Well, how far is negative 10 from 0? Well, it's 10 units away. So we strip away that negative sign, and we just write 10. And now notice that the um, absolute values have become parentheses. And now all I have to do, all I have to do now is just evaluate this. So you know how to do that. We multiply first. So what's um, 5 times 10? That's 50. So I have 8 minus 50, which is negative 42. And so the value of this expression that has absolute values in it is actually negative 42. So notice that the final answer could be negative, but whenever you have an absolute value by itself, that will always pop out as positive. That's the important thing. OK, let's try something else. I want to show you now the official sanctioned definition. Here it is. The mathematicians all over the universe got together and said, now we're going to make it official. So I want to share it with you because it's very exciting. Here's the official definition for absolute value. And it comes in two flavors, because we don't know if the thing inside is positive, or 0, or negative. And so now we have to give two definitions. But if you think about what it means, it'll be totally clear, even though it looks like there's two separate cases. There is, because there's two separate possibilities. Suppose that A is positive, or 0. Then what's the absolute value of it? Well, since it's already positive, it's just itself. So we just write down A. So the absolute value of a positive or 0 number is actually 
the number itself. Now here's the tricky part. What if A were negative? Now if A were negative, then this thing here, you might say, oh, the absolute value of A is just A. But think about it. If A is negative, I've got to make it positive. And how do you make it positive? If you have a negative number, the way you can make it positive is by multiplying it by negative 1, reversing the sign. So if I reverse the sign here, then I write negative A. And see why it's a little tricky? It looks to the kind of uh, spectator that's not really paying attention. Oh, wait, that's negative. No, it's not, because the negative was there to begin with. So since I have a negative number, a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's a fancy way of saying positive. You see how sneaky this is? That's the official definition, which is sometimes OK to, to see. But, but really, it's the thinking that's important, that the absolute value is measuring distance. And distance is never, never, never negative. OK, so let's take a look at um, an expression that I want us to simplify. So here's an ex ex expression, 3x minus the absolute value of x. And what I want to do here is I want to see if we can simplify that. And we have to consider two cases, because we don't know if the unknown x is positive or 0 or negative. So we're going to look at into two cases. So let's take a look at the two cases. Suppose that x is greater than 0. If x is greater than 0, then what's the absolute value of x? The absolute value of x is just itself. So in this case, I see this quantity can be, and let me call that, let me give it a name. Let me call this quantity um, star then star will equal, well, 3x minus, and then what's the absolute value of x? If x is positive, it's just itself, so it's x. Well, and now I have a little algebraic expression to simplify. If I have three x's and I take one x away, how many x's do I have? Well, two x's. That's straightforward. That's great. Cool. Now, here's the tricky part. What if x, ooh, that should be negative, by the way. Whoop, that's a typo. See, wait a minute, don't you go anywhere. I want to fix it right now live in front of you, because that's the same case. And wouldn't it be great if they asked the same question twice and you already got it? That's like really cool. But no, sadly, that should be negative. All right, OK. We'll do with the negative. So the next time you're taking a test and you don't like the question that is being asked, just rewrite it. Your teacher will love you. OK, so this should be x less than 0. Now, if x is less than 0, then what happens? Well, then the absolute value of x is going to be the opposite of x, right? Because if x is negative, I want it to be positive, which means negative of that. So this is the tricky part. So now star is going to look a little different. It's going to be still the 3x out in front, but now it's going to be mi negative minus and then what's the absolute value of x? If x is negative, I've got to flip the sign of it, and so I put in negative x. I know this looks like it's negative, but think about it. If x were, let's say, negative 2, then this is negative, negative 2, which is positive 2. So even though it looks negative, it really might not be. In fact, in this case, it's definitely not. And that's the important thing. When you look at a variable or an unknown, don't always think it's positive. It may be negative, in which case, if you put a negative in front of it, it becomes positive, And that's the absolute value. Now we have to simplify. 3x minus negative x. That's the same thing as 3x plus x, which is 4x. So the answer now is 4x. And the answer before was, in fact, 2x. By the way, what if x equals 0? Well, if it equals 0, then, in fact, the same exact rule above carries over. So in fact, I could put here, this holds for x greater than or equal to 0. So that's the little thing there. Anyway, the important thing is that just because you see a variable x, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's positive. A negative in front of a variable might actually make the number positive. All right, one last thing, and then we're going to close it out. Let's think about the original definition as distance and say, let's actually compute the distance between a and b where a is 2 and b is negative 3. Well, how do you do that? Well, the way you set this up is you take the absolute value of the difference. So where is a? Well, a here, I don't have a red pen. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. I guess they've taken that privilege away from me. So I'm going to use the orange. So here's a, and b is way over here. So this is A, and here's B. It's a tired B. 
And so now, how do you find the distance between these two points? It's the difference of the absolute values. So what you have to do is you have to compute for distance the absolute value of the difference. So let's say b minus a. Now, what is that? Well, you just have to plug in the numbers now. So the absolute value of b, that's negative 3, minus a, that's 2. And now you have to compute this. And what is that? Well, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And what's the absolute value of negative 5? Finding absolute values in numbers are always easy to strip off the negative sign if it happens to be there. This is just 5. So the answer is 5. Now let's just check that and see. Are there really five units between A and B? Well, we can count them. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that confirms it. But here's the cool thing about absolute value. The order of how you subtract it doesn't make a difference because you see, by taking the absolute value at the end of the day, it's going to strip away any negative signs. So you don't have to memorize, oh, it's always B minus A. Doesn't matter. Suppose you wanted to look at the difference A minus B. As long as you nestle that between the absolute values, you're going to get the same answer. Doesn't make a difference which way you subtract. So in this case, let's try this. A is 2 minus B. Now check it out. B is negative 3. Got to be careful. What's 2 minus negative 3? That's actually 2 plus 3, which is 5. And what's the absolute value of 5? It's still 5. So the cool thing is order doesn't matter when you're subtracting within the absolute value because all the answers will be positive. It's distance. Distance is always positive, except in the case where you are, where you started, in which case the distance is 0. Distance is never negative. The absolute value is never negative. I'll see you soon.